Ryan Tedder in our studio, Look buddy. What's up? How are hey. you? Hey, greetings. Good to see you again. How you been? I well, I didn't shave for you guys today. I didn't shave. For I you thought all. about it. I didn't it. shave either. I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna just go all natural. No yeah. need, guys. No need Let's to shave. See those legs, Joe. She didn't shave. Oh, they're, they're really, they're not, they're not in tip-top shape right yeah. now. I'm letting it. Are you actually going to show up here? Yeah. I thought even, you were about to really show your legs. I was. It's not even November yet. No. Dude, I shaved yesterday. I just have a lot of testosterone. Holy hell. Yeah, I know. It's really, God bless you, man. It's raging, huh? Yeah, that's some Neanderthal no. shiz going on I know. there. I love it. No, I got back from Alaska. I was in Alaska, so I became like a grizzly man up there or something. Yeah, I mean, as you do. You yeah. Know, when, have you ever been? When in Rome. Uh, yes. Did I you have. love it? I did. Uh, it was it's pretty terrifying. We we played a festival of some sort. We did something up in Anchorage. Yeah. And then um, we chartered a uh, we chartered a glacier plane. Mm -hmm. And I have a I have a rule of thumb as a musician. We fly. I've flown on more tiny little planes than you oh, can imagine. Man. And yeah. once you get busy enough, if you're lucky enough uh, to be busy enough, you end up chartering a lot. And okay. Artists, you know, for those at home listening, they assume that, oh, rock stars, they fly private jets all the time. It's not because we're dying to get in tiny-ass planes and fly around. Mm -hmm. It's because when you start looking at the calendar and the timing of getting from one place to the other, mm -hmm. whether you're a DJ or a band, not all the time, but a lot of the time, it is the only way to actually make the show. Sure. And mm -hmm. so we charter a lot. We've had a few scares, but probably the scariest thing we ever did, um, I won't go up in single-engine planes. It's just a rule I have. I don't okay. care who you are, what it's for. Um, how safe it is, how many times you've flown. Sure. I just don't do it because it's just like Murphy's Law, the one time you, you right. do that. You and if go one dead. engine goes out, there's no backup. You're, you're dead. Right. And, yeah, and and the history of musicians in single-engine planes right. is horrifying. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody knows that about me, and we charter this glacier plane in Alaska, and we walk up, and yeah. it's a single-engine plane. Oh, no. And I'm like, nope, I'm not going. I, I'm like, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. And I get coerced into by everybody into going. And this plane's from probably 1965. Oh. It's, it's, it's like one something that was flying over the African Congo at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. So we get in, and I'm just like an absolute wreck the whole time. Take anything? Well, that's yeah. where I'm getting to. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we get ahead, in, sorry. and I'm... I'm terrified and our our, yeah. our tour manager taps me on the shoulder and we're all nervous but i'm i'm horrified right tour manager uh taps me on the shoulder and he takes his backpack and he pulls out a bottle of johnny walker black okay and he's like i brought this just in case uh it got hairy yeah and we proceeded to kill that bottle no in a what was a probably 45 minute flight oh my gosh i, I mean i the only time i've ever guzzled alcohol in my life i'm not like a huge sure get hammered guy yeah yeah, yeah. I was so scared that I just, I probably drank a third of that bottle in one gulp. Oh, and my god! And then it hit me, and then I had the best time ever. <laughs> yeah. And we and we skirted. We got down to within 20 feet of the top of a glacier. This guy has been doing this for forever. So he, he had goes, a shot, too. Oh, yeah, he did. Then he goes Then he goes down in between the, the crevice, two no. glaciers. So we're flying just above the water. Right. And on either side of us, it's going up 40 feet, 50 oh, uh. feet of ice. Oh, my god! And I'm talking, I'm talking... Like 50 feet to the right, yeah. 50 feet to the left, and we're in the crevice. Good yeah. lord. It was horrifying. And you're, but you're loving it because you got the Johnny Walker in you. Kind of. I'm, I'm, I, I was, we were going, we were sitting here going, this is how it ends. This is how, right. this is that stupid stuff right. that, that we you read do, about, that talk you read about. about the and this is how it, yeah. this is how it ends. And then after the flight, I Googled, I made the mistake of Googling, um, uh, most dangerous, like, uh, uh, the place that has the most, most, uh, like airplane accidents crashes. Or airplane crashes. Alaska yeah. by a landslide no has yeah. the most fatalities and the most airplanes go down oh because gosh. more people fly in Alaska because of the the nature of the state. Right. That's yeah. how yeah, highway, highway patrol. That's right. how you get food delivered. That's how mm. you go to yeah. school. And so everyone's flying all the time in single engine planes and those suckers just go down left and right. Oh my god. So gosh. yeah, after after that, yeah, uh, I, I I do not fly single. I still do not fly single engine right. planes. I never Quick will question again. about Alaska, though. Do you find that, like, uh, the crowd in, you know, somewhere as remote as Alaska, there are they more into the show because they don't get as many shows? For sure they are. Yeah. yeah. Anytime you go somewhere, people don't go. They're, they're, they're super appreciative. I was talking to um, Anita, the okay. huge Latin American uh, uh, female artist from Brazil. She's, like, in Brazil, the biggest artist in the history of South America. Okay. And she just played Africa. And she got to, like, Senegal or somewhere yeah. and, and was, like, 
stadium sized crowd and it, it was riot police coming out there mm-hmm. and she said it's like the greatest crowd of my life was in mm-hmm. central africa you know or, the, or coastal africa right and it's just it's it, a big part of it is you're there you yeah. win you go to slovenia estonia oh my god you're here right like, yeah. and they just they nobody go ever comes here thanks for coming to not the enough mentality. not enough yeah. people go there so india mumbai we yeah. played there last year boom like crazy insane crowd wow yeah Dude, that's going to be amazing. That many people out there just cheering for you and knowing the words to your songs. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Who has the worst crowds, though? Los Angeles? <laughs> Ooh. I mean, you know. We all have our phones out. Yeah, yeah. Right. Too right. cool. Is that annoying, too, the phones? It's annoying. I mean, uh, we've played the Forum. We've played Hollywood Bowl. I would say not crapping on a crowd. I just prefer yeah. outdoor venues to, to arenas any day of yeah. the year. Well, not in the winter, but like right. an outdoor venue like um, Hollywood Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that's great. Has always been a great crowd. Yeah, that's I've never. Was. So something about Los Angelinos, when you get them out to the Greek or you get them to Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. Different experience. Yeah, they're they're right. crazy. Uh, the moment you get them in Staples or Forum, it's like it's different. It's just like a different vibe. Yeah. Um, you know, music cities are hard. Nashville crowd, you'd think it'd be crazy. They're not. You know, right. they're, they're kind of reserved. They're calm. They're, 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 they're I don't want to say jaded, but they've just. Yeah, it's a way yeah. of life. It's daily. For them. Half the crowd is in in the music business. Yeah. So yeah. they're just like, eh, it's another concert. You yeah, know? here we go. But if you take uh, take the same show and you go play in Milwaukee, like. Different. Psh, right. Insanity or. Right. You know, uh, Red Rocks or. or you yeah. Know, yeah. They're, different cities have different. Boston is a crazy crowd every time. Yeah. Um, and. The, Different different cities have a completely different temperature. Every city has a different temperature. Sure. Yeah. Do you mind us capturing the moment though on the phones and stuff and trying to memorialize that? Forever? I don't mind it. I at nighttime, uh, at nighttime when the with the flashlight out. Yeah. I think it's rad. People love that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather it be that than like back in the day when everybody was like just smoking cigarettes and everybody had a lighter. You know right. what I mean? Which that was right. cool too. But like uh, as we started, that was kind of fading out. Yeah. That that era was fading out and. Um, I much prefer the the lights of the cell phones. I don't mind it. So if you, I don't know if you saw Elton John when he came to town. Did you see him? No, I did not. I saw the show. Great show. <clears throat> so if you were in the crowd, Elton John, and you're there with your son and your wife, and the guy in front of you has got his phone up, and he's filming, yeah. but he's not filming, like he forgot to hit record, but he thinks he's filming, yeah. would you tap him on the shoulder and tell him you're not filming, or let him be? I would. I would, I would tap I him. Tell him. Mm. I would tell him. I didn't tell him. I would, I, you didn't? I regret that. Yeah. I wouldn't have told him. No? No. Jill? I think that's funny. I, I would have let him know. You would have let him know? Yeah. yeah. I would have told him. I like to take people's phones from the front row. Oh, and do stuff with them? And like, and then turn it, you know, bring it on stage, yeah. turn it on crowd, turn on the crowd, walk sure. around stage with it, because then it's like that person has this video oh that is, you never see it. If you're in a crowd and you're right. not an artist, you never understand what it's like to be the focal point mm-hmm. of 17,000 people in an arena yeah. all aimed aiming their energy at you. Yeah. And so when you capture that on camera and kind of show people. That's pretty amazing. Like it's a cool little that's one yeah. of my favorite things to do for them to have. A couple times a show I grab grab somebody's phone and and like, you know. That's awesome. Video. Do you panic though when you're handing it back, you're handing it to the wrong person or something? Uh so, yeah, I mean sometimes I'm just I walk back. I'll walk around and I'll walk back and be like, "Uh, <laughs> right, right. Like whose phone is this that I have in my hand this. right here, you know? Somebody take this." Yeah, yeah, you know. Whatever. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, the new music is awesome. Thank you. Thank I just you. heard it for the first time because, like I said, I've been in Alaska. I heard it when I got back today. It's oh, really, sick. really good. Sick. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we've I been, love it. We've been happy with it. You know, we haven't really, we, well, we haven't really, we haven't uh, promoted or put out a song intentionally uh-huh. since the end of, really the end of 16, beginning of 17. Has it's it been, been that long? It has. We The last time I promoted a song would have been... Christmas of 16. Wow. Okay. Um, I remember because we like we did the voice or something and like that. And yeah. then I was like, I'm done. Like I, I have to be done. Mm-hmm. And it was a horrible timing because we just dropped the new album. But I just I had this like epiphany on uh, the promo circuit of the, in the the latter half of 16. I just was beating myself into the ground on tour. I had been gone. I'd been on tour. I'd been gone uh, for 10 years. You, know? you have and kids. I have two kids. Yeah. I like, um, you know, our oldest just turned, uh, just turned nine and he like, uh, you know, I mean the first five years of his life to mm-hmm. me, I have to look at photos because I don't, oh, man, I wasn't there. Yeah. I was physically not there. I was, I was gone. We traveled 400,000 miles in a year. I, I did not, I was not home more than three weeks straight 
uh, once in eight years. Did you beat yourself up about that? I don't. I can't now. I'm yeah. really good at not beating That's myself. Good. I mean, yeah, you know, everybody has their way of compartmentalizing people. Some people yeah. suffer with regrets their whole life over something they did when they were a teenager or uh-huh. you know whatever. And fortunately for me, I'm really good at kind of cutting that off and compartmentalizing yeah. it. I go, I have, I don't have a time machine. I can't go back and do it. I yeah. know why I was doing it at the time. I'm also li- living my dream and pursuing, uh, you know, what my, the point of me being here is yeah. and doing yeah. what I love to do. So if anything else, he'll, he'll hopefully find it inspiring one day when he goes back and looks at videos and things right. and concert footage. And, um, but, but I just, I hit a point after year, right around year 10, where I just drew a line. I said, I yeah. said, I'm going to blink and I'm going to be like another decade's going to go by. Absolutely. And, and, and like, we had just moved back to LA in this beautiful house, which is where we live now. I'd been dying to get back to LA for years. Mm-hmm. We're back here. And like, I was turning down writing session after writing session for probably two and a half years. I, I, hmm. I like, like, you know, uh, everybody, artists who I'm love, you know, Ed, Sharon, hey, I want to do two weeks with you and blah, blah, wow. blah. I can't. So I did a day. You know what I mean? Like, right. I can't, like Taylor, let's go in, or Katie, let's go in, whoever. And the, the people that I've known for forever. And Taylor uh, Lautner and Katie Couric. Exactly. Katie not, Couric and Taylor Lautner. If anybody Lautner. doesn't speak the lingo. <laughs> yeah, Taylor Couric. And, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, you know, writing is kind of my lifeblood. And I sure. couldn't, I, I was constantly passing. Yeah. on all these writing sessions. And so for me, it was just like getting to a point where I'm like, man, I got to slow down and yeah. I got to figure out if I can do anything other than write songs for like five minutes. Okay, well, what allows you to have that confidence then to slow down? Because I'm trying to think if I was in your shoes, and I'm not, so it's hard to imagine, but I'd be afraid that... Make hay while the sun is shining. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. knocks wouldn't keep coming. The calls wouldn't keep coming. Yeah, so FOMO is a funny thing. FOMO will kill you. Um, and FOMO, especially with social media now, the single biggest poison... Of Instagram and Facebook is FOMO. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even if you're having a great life, if you're having the best life and you're living your right. your truth and your life, you get on Instagram for 10 minutes. And if you don't have a strong personal internal constitution and in who you are, yeah, you can go from thinking, "Wow, I've got a, bl- a charmed, blessed life. I got a, I got friends, or I got someone who loves me. I got mm-hmm. a wife, or I got kids, or a husband, or whatever. Right. Or nobody, but you're happy. And then you get on Instagram and you go, "Oh God." You know, David Guetta just flew from Ibiza to France, and now he's in a hot air balloon made out of 24 karat gold, surrounded by supermodels. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you That's just good. get That's right. Good stuff. That's good stuff. I know. And he's got a six pack. What am I doing? Oh and, no. Uh, no! And so, but the point I'm making is obviously yeah. I mean, David's a sweetheart. But but what I'm ma- the point I'm making is you get on social media and yeah. you get this massive FOMO. It's so true. And, and, and it well, makes it, it to makes the regular person too. It it's makes not just you, you. No, it makes you feel like your life, no matter how good it is, isn't good enough. Right. And so I when when I got off the road at the end of 16, January of 17, it's so funny. It's I don't know. It's weird that I did this. Yeah. But I I. Uh, signed off of Twitter and I haven't been on Twitter in two years because really? okay. yeah. because our fans you know we have millions on one republic and I had I don't even know how I, I literally have been so long I had no idea how many I mm-hmm. bet but you find yourself with spare time going on because it's there and reading stuff and I would see stuff from su- supportive stuff but Twitter's a trash heap and it's and I yeah, would see stuff. I would see everybody trolling and I, and I have people in like different parts of the world giving me all kinds of hell for not being on tour or for, or like, I don't, I think the song you wrote for so-and-so could have been better. I think this, that, I think, I think, I think all these people, these bedroom assassins, I like to call them. And I'm sitting here going, what are these clowns done? Like, what are you done? And, and, and and then, but then I'm finding myself getting more and more mad. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, F this man, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Like these, I don't want anything. Instagram I still mess with because I like for some reason the tone, the tone of Instagram is right. just nicer. It's totally. kinder. It right. I don't know why, yeah. but please trolls, stay away. <laughs> yeah. Cause I like watching what my friends I genuinely now that I've like I've hit reset, got back into d- took about a year, year and a half doing a lot of stuff that had nothing to do with music. Uh-huh. Doing TV, films, all kinds of stuff. And then now that I'm back in writing w- for other artists, like with a vengeance. Yeah. I've kind of recalibrated, got my life sorted, understand what's important, and that's why I'm uh, able to do new One Republic music now. It's been two years, mm-hmm. and I I just had zero motivation. I, we'd mm-hmm. get together with the band. We still do shows. You sure. know, the band still does well. We we did a tour in Asia. We did the, yeah. the Honda Civic tour t- uh, like a year and a half ago, 
And but really, really, we've been low key until now. And I said, I want to live life. I need to have something to say. Right. You just write. I don't want to write songs to write hits for one. Do the Republic. other guys feel the same way? No. No. Uh, I, at the end of sixteen, yes, yes we all okay. wanted to jump off a cliff. Honestly, right. we we were toast, yeah. toast, and I was beginning to hate this band. Hate, hate, hate being in it. Sure. Hate that I had created created this machine that was successful, and 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 my goal was to like play everywhere in the world and do arenas everywhere in the world, and we got there. Right. And then I was like, oh crap! Now I have to maintain that. Mm. Like That's a lot. Oh, dude, it's crazy. I've yeah. had conversations with other artists who, in the last two years who've hit that same wall that I did. And yeah. we're like, man, I, I made a big post on Facebook two years ago about what I was doing. You know, I had to get on, on meds for the first time. I yeah. was having panic attacks. I couldn't sleep. I was having heart palpitations for months on end. Um, all of it was, was caving in. And, and, and that's when I was like, this is that, that when people say I hit a wall, this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is it. This is, the, this is that wall that people right. talk about. And you have to slow down or you will crash. You know, you mm -hmm. will just crash and burn, and, and I didn't want to do that, and I didn't want to hate music, and it was starting right. to happen. And so, right. so fortunately now, I'm ha I'm legitimately can tell you, yeah, I'm having so much damn fun. I wish there was 36 hours in a day, because that's how I'm. I'm oh wow! I'm, every single day, I'm stoked about the next day. Cool. Did the yeah. idea of Songland come during that break that you were having? No. Um, Songland was floating in the ether for like four years. I got offered originally to replace Adam on The Voice. I got asked if I would want to do it four, yes. four, four, four plus years ago. Right. He wanted to piece out for a minute, and um, he he was getting burnt out on it. And they called me and they said, "We got, we got you know, in the next two days, we need an answer. Yeah. But like, would you want to replace? This is back when we were promoting Native, so Counting Stars, Love Runs Out, and I Live. We were doing all yeah. that album cycle, and I was honestly having a good time then. And I was like, man, we're kind of full tilt right now. Like, I, I was like. Oh, that's such a big offer, though, and, I, and I'm not an idiot. I know they pay those guys well. Yes, um, yes. Before I could answer, before I could give them an answer, they called back, like, the next day. Yeah. False alarm. Adam decided he wants to stay, but we have this other show called Songland that you could help craft with. You could actually help define what it is. And so okay. that took forever. It took four years. We got that up and off the ground. Um uh, song. Fortunately, it's been received well. I know we're doing another yeah. season. Um, it was the top top debut new show of the last two years on any oh, network. So we were such a great idea. We're happy yeah, with it. You guys should check it out if you haven't seen it. it it's, it's like good. it will. It, it will. It's like musical Shark Tank. That's yeah. the best yeah. example That's I could give. Absolutely, way to it's, it, yeah. it's Shark Tank. It's Shark Tank for music in, yeah. a, in a way. And um, I have another show with Simon Fuller that mm -hmm. I created uh, on Nickelodeon that's scripted, aimed at. Like young adults, kids, and parents. Mm -hmm. I, I was like sitting here after like years of having kids watching Nick and Disney going, I'm not laughing at any of these jokes. Okay. No offense to Disney and Nick, but like, why are why are my kids watching these shows right. that are kind of is the word banal, banal, banal? Okay. Uh like bad humor, four camera scripted comedies with laugh tracks, with fake laugh tracks. Uh-huh. And I'm sitting here going, this this thing seems so dated. Like yeah. the, none of this is funny. So you it's came horrible. Up with a scripted show? So I came up with a scripted show. And my pitch to Simon Fuller, who created American Idol, he yeah. managed, he created Spice Girls, managed David Beckham, you know, whatever. He's Simon Fuller. So I was with him last summer, and I said, I was complaining about all these shows. Yeah. I said, I said, you know what's amazing? Like, the Despicable Me's of the world and, and, and the Incredibles, it proves that kids, you can create programming that adults will want to watch with their kids uh -huh. that's, that's incredible. Yeah. My kids would go from watching these shows on these kids' channels and then, then the next day they'd be like, "Dad, can we watch Parks and Recreation? Can we watch uh, Portlandia?" And, hmm. and they would get all the jokes. And I don't let them watch like radar art stuff and bad stuff yeah, for kids, but like they, my kids get actually well scripted stuff, like funny stuff, Malcolm in the Middle and all that stuff. Okay. So that's when the light bulb went off, and I was like, "We're these shows are writing down for kids. You don't, they don't, you uh -huh. don't need, you don't need to write down for them. Right. They aim low. Yeah. Like, give. What if you actually gave them a show?" Where the jokes were actually funny and uh -huh. the music was written by people who have written lots of hit songs. So the music was phenomenal. Okay. And I and I was telling this to Simon Fuller. I was like, what? Like, like, why can't you just have a show that's music based? Because kid everybody loves music. Yep, for sure. Funny, but not for camera, not cheesy, not laugh tracks yeah. with actual hit songs. And he goes, Well, you you're the perfect person to make a show like that, <laughs> right? You know? And so then about Three months later, I was on a flight to Toronto, and the entire show idea hit me on the flight. And I wrote the whole thing down, came back, said, "Simon, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. You're a boss. Like, I need a partner in this." Right. And um, 
he called me uh, two weeks later and he said I had dinner with the head of Nickelodeon. He bought the show in five months. Wow. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. So it's we hopefully start shooting. The goals start shooting in December. We have the pilot episode wow. done. Uh, Thirteen episodes, season one. Do you um, have budgetary set, concerns? Set, set, no, zero. No, even with all these stars, you're gonna bring in for the music. Uh, well, no, no. The the, the 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 kids on the show, and I say kids, like teenagers. Oh, gotcha. Imagine okay. like imagine like this Berkeley College of Music, but okay. set in a high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like an element so of an element of glee, but we're not okay. doing cover songs. Okay. So these are all aspiring artists in, on okay. the show. They want to win the talent show at the end of the year because every right. year the talent show you have record labels, managers, executives all looking at for, that talent show. At the talent okay. show, it's the number one school in America for gifted artists, musicians, okay. songwriters, producers. Set in Southern California, That's I basically cool. created a, a fictional a high school that I wanted to go to when I was right. fourteen, and set it on a you know a cliff overlooking the ocean in, in Southern Southern California, yeah. and um I had the le- I was fortunate enough to f- track down the lead writer in one of the EPs on Scrubs. Huh. So oh, that's she, cool. she's the showrunner in, yeah. in, in one of the co EPs, and she also did Malcolm in the Middle. So, yeah. so we just we want to raise the bar on children's programming. And Nickelodeon will probably ask you to stop talking crap about their other shows while well, promoting hey, your new I show. Didn't name, I didn't I was name one show. what the shows were. <laughs> I grew up with all of kids. I grew yeah. up what Some of them are good. Some of them are good. Okay, name one that's good. I actually like the uh, what's the superhero one? Oh, that guy, the kid? The kid and the dude. And the dude? Henry, yeah. Oh, that's the best. We yeah. were invited to go on set. We never went. I was going like, to say Henry Danger, but Henry that's Danger. not it. Harvey, no, is that Harvey it? Danger. Harvey, Harvey Danger, Danger, Henry Danger. Something Danger. Yeah. Danger? And then school, school of Rock. I was on School of Rock okay. like in an, in an episode, yeah. and I have a soft spot in my heart for, for okay. School of Rock. Um, some of them are good. Some yeah. of them are just like as a as an adult, as someone, yeah. if you're in your 30s, you're sitting here watching and going, I, 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 I can't. I just don't, right. I don't sure. know why this is funny. Um, and part of it's just the laugh tracks for me. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We style that down a little bit. Yeah. You know. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's a scripted you, thing. I'm, I'm doing a... Uh, a movie. I'm working on a lot of music for other artists, of course. Sam Smith and in Five Seconds of Summer's new new stuff. Charlie Puth new stuff. Yeah. Um, Jonas, of course. Well, what's the deal with Jonas? Because we heard you've got two songs. Two other ones coming with that down the pike. Yeah. And people are featured on that. Yeah. What's I've got a I got a song with. Um, Ah man, am I, am I allowed? I don't think I'm allowed. I don't want to be no, the one that announces are. it. I've got it right here. Oh yeah, you had it right there. Yeah, so <laughs> he's allowed to talk. We have about a it. we have a, a song that's coming that we just got mastered last week. Mm-hmm. That's coming in the next three weeks. Mm-hmm. That is a I think a pretty big record. Release under really whose different. name? Release under, uh, let's say. Hey, listen, we're friends. Somebody we're all friends with. Okay. Okay. And uh, and the, and I mean the Jones Brothers and myself. And um, I can't give it away, but I'll just say that like. This person has has been very uh, interspersed in the Jonas Brother world over the last few months. Okay, and I'll leave it at that. The last few months. Have, um, have to Can we? I'm not say guy or girl. Um, uh, well, we kind of have both coming. Ooh, so okay. there's two. Right. So one's a guy, one's a girl. But I'm Accent? not. I'm not going to answer anything else. The new Accent hit single from Priyanka Chopra. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave, yes. it, at I'm gonna leave yes. it at that. It's not Dip Priyanka up. Chopra. <laughs> All right, so leave no. it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. One, yeah, one's a guy, one's a girl. They're both very, so very, 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 very well known. No, they're they're they're, they're, they're recording artists. Valerie over here is a Jonas Brothers <laughs> super fan. She so knows. Do you want to guess? Do you, Come she's on, got he can't say anything, but you can guess. Holler it out. If you don't know, you could ask some of your friends at iHeart in this building have heard it. Oh, well, that's all right. Come on. Now we can just go ask John Ivy. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Val, don't bother me. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you know that's privileged information. Yeah, um, no, he'll, he'll share that with you. He might, he might, he might, share, he might share it with you. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's funny. That, a lot of music stuff. New One Republic, we shot a video. Uh, Rescue Me, obviously, we're going right now. That's, that's, did you write that in 10 minutes, though? I did. Were yeah. you confident after 10 minutes that you nailed it? I yeah. go back and look at it again. No, I, I was. I you was. I, you just done it long enough. I've done it long you know enough. It's good. And it's kind of like, you know, you 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 uh, if you cook long enough, if you're in the sure. kitchen long enough, not every meal do you, not every menu item do you create from thin air in ten minutes. But uh-huh. every once in a while, you sh- if you show up every day yeah. and you work every day, you get a ten minute once meal. once once in a while the heavens open up yeah. and something lands in your lap and it's that fast. That's awesome. Um, you know the cor- the chorus for sucker Jonas Brothers sucker the chorus for sucker was instant it wasn't yeah. even ten it was it was twenty seconds wow the you know the chorus that I I remember the moment like listening to the guitar riff I, and I was like what if it was something simple like I'm a sucker for you say the word and I'll go anywhere blindly and it was the first thing out of my mouth so it was like you know you you just if you show up enough mm-hmm. good things happen if every day was like that i'd be the number one rider of all time but uh every day is not like that how <laughs> so. long did you hold on to that one sucker because <coughs> you had that for a while right it was probably about nine months hmm. was it yeah 
Nine months. I mean, look, the pink, the pink single that's out. Yeah. Uh, uh, can we pretend? Yeah. Pink and I wrote that. Man, that's a great song. Pink and I wrote that two years ago. That's such a yeah. good song. Can we pretend that, that someone likes the president? <laughs> that's Man. a line that only Pink could say that. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. It's made for her. Um, yeah, some songs, you know, uh, Five Seconds of Summer, easier. The, that chorus was probably 30 seconds. See, now what you're doing is you're bragging. To you hear all these hits he's talking hey, about? Just, so yeah. many Good hits. for you, I'm though, trying, man. I'm just trying to keep, I'm, I'm just talking pop culture right now. Right. We're just talking but, shop. But it's interesting to me that I think, I think a lot of people recognize it, but people all across the country may not recognize how prolific you are as a songwriter. And I think yeah. that's coming out now, obviously, over yeah. the recent years. Yeah. But you go from the Diane Warrens to the Richard Marks to people who represented their generations. Yeah. This is this is your time. And my FM you know? is a Ryan Tedder station. I mean, yeah. if you took out all the Ryan Tedder songs, yeah. we would have like two no, songs. No, you to guys play. kick ass. I you love when you're ass. listening and you post the story of you in your car. That's right. That, I yeah. did see yeah, my I FM. That. Yeah. That. yeah anytime, anytime I need to feel just if I'm having a rough day and I feel better yeah. about myself, I turn on my FM. <laughs> I just wait like ten minutes, and I'm like, "Oh, there it is." Yes. <laughs> Dude, you guys, are, you guys are amazing, though. You've been so supportive from day one, so I appreciate it. Well, thank you, because yeah. you give us the music to play that puts people in a good mood. Or and that last thing you out. said is going to go in a promo, oh, right. which will live yeah. on forever. That, that. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred four point three <laughs> My FM. Well, did you see where I totally shut up? None of us said anything you were oh, saying. Yeah. And I'm going like this to the camera. <laughs> we got it. That's you, what we you, you want to see how we do a liner? They're they're filming right here. Here's how you do a liner. Hey, this is Ryan from One Republic, and you are listening to 104.3 My FM. But now you got to throw in the Valentine in the Morning play. Valentine, you are listening to Valentine in the Morning on My FM. And now say, and chances are good that I wrote this song. And chances are good that I wrote this song. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. There you go. That's fantastic. There you go. There you go. Listen, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, next time I'll shave it for you. Yeah, it's it's time. I I gotta. I don't know what it is lately. I just like. Does I your like, wife like the beard? She like yeah. She actually do, like anything more than like today where it is today. It yeah. kind of gets gnarly. Okay. I'm just like you know, yeah. It's I I'm I'm, I don't know why. I just lately have been too busy to shave. Yeah. No, I hear you. But then part of it is if if when I sh- when I actually shave, I I've always had a kid face like a young face. Yeah, if I don't face. if I don't have facial hair, it's yeah. just I get carded. Mm-hmm. Okay. Legitimately carded everywhere. So it's huh. like I keep the facial hair, I don't get carded. Man, I think like my my wife does not like my beard. She's not into it. It's too gray for her, I guess. Makes me look old. <laughs> but I think it kind of hides the chin a bit. Like if you got like a I don't have a double chin, but like, you know, it kind of Of course. hides okay. that a bit. I like it. Okay. Gives you a little definition. You're drawing right. out a jawline. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's, That's a different doing. way of saying it. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it gives you a little <laughs> definition. Yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with it. Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, man. that. I'll tell her you like it. Keep going. All right, Ryan Tedder. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Dude, that's awesome.